Welcome back to the reload bench. Please pardon any background noise you might hear. The dishwasher's running, the furnace could kick on, and the dog is roaming around the house. Last month, I took a road trip out to Las Vegas, Nevada, not to go to SHOT Show, but to attend the antique arm show that's held there every year. It was my first time going to the show. I met up with a friend, fellow YouTuber, The Wild Snapper. I'll include a link to his channel at the end of this video and in the description section below. Snapper knows a lot more about these older guns than I do. We went to the show both days, and I had a really good time. Now, I planned this trip for about a year, making the arrangements and that sort of thing. And over the course of the year, I set some goals for myself. The first and most obvious goal is to finally meet Snapper in person. And I have to say that I'm glad that I made the trip out there. I had a really good time. I learned a lot. We went out in the desert and did some shooting. Overall, uh, he was a good host while I was in Las Vegas. Thanks, Snapper. Another goal that I set for myself was just to get an idea of what the show is about. Since I had never gone to it before, the only thing I had to compare it to is the antique arm show that's held here in Southeast Michigan four times a year. It's a good show, and I really like it. It's kind of nice because it's so close to the house, but that was really all I had to go off of. I have to say that this show in Las Vegas is much bigger, and it has a lot more rare firearms than what we have at the show here in Southeast Michigan. The centerpiece of this show was a million dollar gun. We don't have that around here. So it was definitely worth going to from that standpoint. I decided that I would kind of take some notes, just see how things were and make a decision by the time I was done with the show, if I wanted to come back ever again. And the answer is yes, I will be going back. Now I won't be going back every year, but I, I the plan is to go back to the antique arm show in Las Vegas again at some point. It, it was that good. So in addition to that, I said, well, you know, I'm going to a gun show. I should look for something. I should buy something while I w was there, you know, I mean, if I see it. And I thought about it and I said, well, what do I see at the antique arm shows here that I have maybe wanted to buy, but I just didn't bring enough cash with me to buy? Or what's something that I don't think I would see at the antique arm show here? And I decided that I would set a goal of buying an Arasaka bayonet for my son, which I did. As a matter of fact, I bought two, one for dad as well. Now, these aren't anything special. These are kind of uh, middle of the road, run of the mill, Arasaka bayonets. The arsenal markings uh, aren't, aren't anything rare. The condition is, isn't anything spectacular. They're not in bad shape. And I got them for a fair price, about what I would pay online or what I would pay, what I've seen them go for at the antique arm show here. So I think I did pretty good with that. The other thing that I was looking for specifically was an original 19th century English Bowie knife. A Bowie knife that was manufactured in Sheffield, England and shipped over here and sold to Americans kind of on the cheap. I really wasn't too sure what to expect with that. I did a little bit of research on it. I wasn't sure if I would end up buying some forgery or reproduction or something like that. I didn't even know what they cost. So I did a little bit of research online and kind of just took my chances. I ended up finding a knife that I liked, about the size that I wanted for the price I was willing to pay. And I looked at some other knives that I didn't have enough cash with me to buy, but if I did, I, I would have picked them up. So that may be my goal for the next time I go out there is to look for more of these Bowie knives. And the reason I want the Bowie knife is because it's something that I think the Wild West or the Old West character that I have been working on trying to, to get everything together to, to portray would have. And I'm okay with a reproduction or an original. It doesn't matter to me. I just don't want to end up buying a forgery, end up paying original price for a forgery. So I think the price I paid for this is fair, and I don't think it's a forgery based on the fact that for that price, they would have lost money to try to, to antique it. But here it is, leather sheath, stag grip, made in Sheffield, England. So I'm happy with the purchases I made at the show. I'm glad I got to meet Snapper and his family. And I shot footage, not just for this YouTube channel, but for my other YouTube channels as well. And not just in Las Vegas, but on the trip out there and on the trip back home. In this video, I'm going to have pictures and short video clips taken 
at the Antique Arm Show. For some of the pictures, I'll do some sort of half-assed voiceover for a narration to explain what they are. If you really like old firearms, antiques, if you're into some of the Old West guns, things like that, I think you might like this video. So here I am at not SHOT Show 2023 at the Westgate in Las Vegas. Got my armband. She was when I first met her. All right, time to go look around. The entrance fee was $15 a day. You got an armband so you could leave the show and come back. After paying your entrance fee, you went down the hallway and into an area that looked like it had reenactment stuff and books. And then from there, you went into another room that had a lot of swords and things like that. There was a little sign about checking firearms in and out, but I didn't see any security. Nobody was giving anybody a hard time. No law enforcement there. People were walking in and out with guns, knives. It was just like a regular gun show in that way. After going through the room with the swords, there's a much bigger room, and that's where the, the main part of the, the showroom floor was. That's where your antique firearms were. Here's some Smith & Wesson number threes some really nice engraving on them. Colt Python revolver. All of these revolvers are marked for auction. Here's a Bowie knife with stag grips and a Dragoon revolver that are tagged for auction. Here's a P-17 Enfield rifle. In addition to guns and knives, they also had coins at the show. I got a couple for Don't Call Me Mrs. Squibload. Been here 35 minutes, and this is the third original Henry I've seen. That looks like my Lamat, except mine didn't cost that much. This is a conversion revolver. They would take a cap and ball revolver and modify it to accept self-contained cartridges. This was less money than buying a new manufactured cartridge revolver. This one's priced at $6,500. I got to fire one of these after the show. Here's a volcanic pistol, $9,950. All right, so here is a Colt Pocket Navy cartridge conversion. And here's a couple star revolvers. This is kind of what I'm looking for. And yet another Henry. Here's some star revolvers. They made these right around the Civil War. They had them in double action and single action. This is the antique revolver that I'm most interested in acquiring. There's no price on the uh, one on the right, and I think that's a single action. The one on the left is a double action, and it's listed at $2,850. Also of interest to me, this third revolver is a Remington New Model Navy. Now, I've got two reproduction New Model Navies myself. This is an original that's been converted to 38 rimfire, $3,200. Pepper box. Another pepper box. A whole bunch of pepper boxes. Bayonets. I 
On the left, you can see another original Henry rifle. To the right of it is a Colt Dragoon revolver. And then to the right of that is a Colt single action army chambered in 4440. That one's going for $9,250. These two pictures are of a Dance and Brothers revolver. These were made for the Confederacy in Texas during the Civil War. They didn't make very many of them. It's a little bit 1851 Navy. It's a little bit Colt Dragoon with kind of their, their own design to it. I've got a reproduction of this gun. They're very rare. This one is going for $32,500. Here's a third model Colt Dragoon. The tag says 1864, and above it, I believe, are two British Sea Service flintlock pistols. I got to fire one of those after the show. It was a lot of fun. Here's a Drysa semi-automatic handgun. I really don't know very much about these, but C and Arsenal made a video about it. All right, where are we at? Number four, number five. I'm losing track. Some more flintlock pistols. Here's another star revolver. Here's an Arasaka bayonet with the scabbard and frog for $350. Some Mausers. Here's a Luger pistol. I didn't examine it very closely. I remember when these things were a dime a dozen. I should have bought one back then. This one's listed at $1,500, which if it runs, that's not a bad price for one today. When you Walther guys talk about your guns, I don't think about that plastic shit they make today. I think about these. P-38s. Both of these are priced at $1,100. Here's a Star for $1,600. That's about what I've seen them go for around here. Here's another Conversion Revolver. Colt 1860 Army, Richard Mason Conversion. It says it's U.S. marked, so it probably started out as a military gun. $8,500. Here's a single action army. Artillery, it says, 8th Cav Company C. $3,150. The revolver on the bottom is a Colt 1851 Navy, U.S. marked, so it was probably a military gun. $1,950. Above it is an 1851 Navy converted to 38 centerfire for $6,750. Between the Colt cap and ball revolvers and the single action army, there was the open top revolver. They only made these for a few years. They didn't make very many of them. This is not a conversion. This gun was designed and built as a cartridge revolver. This one is priced at $5,500.
Here's another star, double action, $2,495. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Here's an original Colt 1849 pocket, $3,995. Revolver at the top is a Colt 1862 Police. The three underneath it are all 1849 Pocket models, but you can see they have different barrel lengths. Here's three Lugers priced between $1,950 and $2,500. Parts, parts, parts. Lots and lots of parts. Here's an M1C sniper rifle. You've got to be careful when you're looking at M1C and M1D Garands because it's very easy to fake an original. The aftermarket parts are easily available and you can very easily make a forgery that you can ask quite a bit of money for. Here's a single action star for $4,695. Here's a third model Dragoon manufactured in 1858. Here's a double action star for $1,695. Both of these revolvers look like they're in good condition. As a matter of fact, I don't think those are original grips. I think those are replacements. They just look too nice. This 1851 Navy on the top is $11,995. The pocket model underneath it is $5,495. They look like they're in good shape, but if I was gonna pay that much for one of these or both of these, I would have an expert look at them first to verify that they are not some sort of fake or that these parts really are original. They're just, these guns were really well kept. Here it is, the centerpiece of the show in my opinion. This is an original Colt Walker. When it goes up for auction, it's probably going to be a million dollars. In the glass case with the Walker was an original 19th century Bowie knife. I've seen this design before. I think it was kind of common back then, and I've seen reproductions of it as well. Rock Island Auction had a second walker there. It wasn't worth as much money because somebody added a site to it. Here's a Leech and Rigdon revolver. This is a Confederate copy of an 1851 Navy. I've got a reproduction of one of these. Here's a Spiller and Burr. This is another Confederate made handgun. I would like to get a reproduction of one of these at some point. Two more Henrys. Oh, 
special features. But it don't matter to me. This is and this is what the gun tables look like at the antique arms show at the Suburban Collection Showplace in Novi, Michigan, four times a year. Here's some World War II rifles. You can read the labels for yourself. Here's one I might have come home with. This, I believe, is an 1849 pocket model, but it's got a long barrel and it's got a cylinder that's chambered for six rounds instead of five. $1,150. Here's an original 1860 Army, $2,200. I don't know if it comes with that flap holster or not. A real blunderbuss, $2,000. This is kind of unusual, a boar shark with a shoulder stock. Here's a cutaway SMLE rifle. This weapon will not function, so I don't know if you have to fill out a 4473 for it or not. It was probably used in some sort of armorer's training course or something like that. It would be an interesting piece to add to the collection. A really nice wall hanger. Two more Henrys. This one is for history and firearms. I told him I would look for a number four Mark I Enfield. Here's two of them with some Arasaka rifles. The long bayonets with scabbards underneath the display are Enfield bayonets. Table full of Colt Thunderers and Lightnings. More than I've ever seen on one table at one time. <laughs> Here's one that I was kind of interested in getting, even though it's not as desirable in the collector's market. This is a Manhattan Arms revolver. This is a Colt copy, so it's not worth as much money. I'm not interested in it so much because it's, it's less money. It's just that it's something different. This is their Series 2 pocket revolver in 36 caliber, $1,700. Here's a silver-plated Colt pocket revolver, $2,500. They actually did silver plate the guns back then. Nickel plating didn't come around until the late 19th century. Here's another one I was kind of looking at, and I'm not much into compact and subcompact guns, but this one kind of intrigued me. It's another one by Manhattan Arms. It's a four inch octagonal barreled 36 caliber Navy revolver, more or less an 1851 Navy clone with a cut down barrel. It does have a loading lever on it, a very short loading lever on it, $950. Underneath is a full size original Colt 1851 Navy. You can see it's got a seven and a half inch barrel 
and that one is running $1,895. Okay, I'm, I've lost count at this point. I mean, here's another. And another, and another, and you get a Henry, and you get a Henry, and you get a, I mean, wow. All right, let's see what this thing costs. $34,900. This one's pretty good. It's $26,900. It's only twenty-six dollars Really? <laughs> Here's an 1861 Navy. Not to be confused with an 1851 Navy. It says it's marshalized, meaning it was a military gun, and that's why he's asking $10,500 for it. The Arasaka on the right is a paratrooper rifle. It folds up. It's priced at... $10,500. Luger, 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 Luger. And a high power. There's an M44 Mosin for $500 and a 9130 Mosin for $700. They look like they're in good shape, but as you can see, the prices of Mosins continue to rise. Here's a Swiss K31 straight pull. I'm having trouble reading the price on it. Above it is an M1 Garand that does have a sniper scope mounted to it and a cheek rest, but it doesn't have the flash hider, so I'm not sure if it's authentic or not. And then above that is something that looks Dragonoff-esque, but I don't know that it's a real Dragonoff. Lots of these miniature firearms. They're supposed to be fully functional, tiny replicas. Here's a Henry with some Winchesters. Here are two Webley Fosbury semi-automatic revolvers. These things are really cool. I would love to have one in my collection. The price on one of these is showing at $14,995. They both look like they're in excellent shape. And another. Wait a minute. It's a reproduction. Still, I take it. All right, all I had to do was go a few feet, and there, there's a real one. Here's a Bowie knife like what I was looking for. Made around 1860. $395. Here's the one I eventually got. This one was also made around 1860, $275. The guy gave it to me for $225.
That is a real suit of armor, and that is real horse armor. This Japanese Type 30 Arasaka bayonet is priced at $165, and that's not bad considering it has a quillion. I almost bought it. What I found unusual about it is the frog that's used to attach the scabbard to a belt was not Japanese. It looked like it was American gear. It looked like it came off of an American M8 scabbard. It was olive drab green canvas with a, a brass snap and the wire attachment to go into the eyelets on an American cartridge belt. On the back of the frog, there's Japanese markings. The dealer said it's an occupation bayonet. More or less, the Americans reissued the Arasaka rifles and bayonets to the Japanese military while we were occupying Japan. Now, I thought we totally did away with the Japanese military after the war. It was a long time before they came back. So I don't know if this is legit or not. And that's why I didn't buy it. And you'll find things like this at these shows where you'll, you'll find something that you try to Google real quick on your phone and you can't find any evidence of it. And you can't tell if it's some sort of forgery or not. For that price, he's really not making a lot off of it if it is a forgery. And if it truly is an occupation bayonet, if there is such a thing, then it'd be something I'd probably want in my collection. This Japanese Type 30 Arasaka bayonet comes complete with scabbard and leather frog. It's got a quillion on it, so it's worth a little bit more money, and it's in pretty decent shape. The guy wanted $250 for it. I didn't have $250 in cash left on me at this point during the show, so I asked him if he would take a credit card. He said no. I went to another dealer who not only took a credit card for a bayonet, but knocked $10 off the cost. This guy lost a sale. Here's some pictures of some 19th century English Bowie knives being sold by Jackson Armory out of Dallas, Texas. I really did consider getting a second Bowie knife from this dealer because he had some nice ones. I really liked them. But I decided I already had the one. I'll get one at a later time. But this gave me a really good idea of what to look for. And I may be contacting this dealer about ordering something from his inventory in the future. Hey, New York Outcast, you think you could make an RNL display stand for dual Luger pistols? Here's a Spencer carbine that I think is $5,500. The picture's kind of blurry, but this is perhaps the newest firearm I saw at the show. This is a Taurus PT-92 with wooden grips for $500. Here's a Remington Rand 1911 A1 for $3,000. Look at this Colt 1911 with U.S. Navy markings, $7,950. Here's a Remington new model, I'm not sure if it's an Army or a Navy, for $795. Here's some more sniper rifles we saw on display as we were headed out of the show. So in visiting the show over the course of two days, I picked up two Arasaka Bay Mets, a Bowie knife, and some silver coins. Overall, the experience I think was worth it worth the effort it was a long drive to get out here and it's gonna be a long drive to get back home but I got to see friends and 
made videos for more than one of my channels. So overall, I was able to do what I always try to do, multitask. Did a little shopping for birthday presents for people. And it's my first time out at Antique Arms. I wanted to know what the show was all about. If this show was more than just a regular gun show or more than just a show with uh, you know, a bunch of Winchesters and nothing else. And it, it definitely is a show with some, some guns that you would find at other gun shows like the Antique Arms show that I'm always talking about in my area, as well as some more rare finds. There are guns, parts, accessories like holsters, bayonets, obviously, antique ammunition. And there are all the other things, books, rare coins, jewelry, medals and uniforms. Just a, a lot of things you see at a normal gun show. This, this show probably isn't for everybody. You, you could find some, some stuff in uh, a middle class, middle class income price range, but there's a lot of high price stuff. Most of the guns here are in the thousands, but it's because they're so old or so rare or they're in such good shape for being so old or so rare. You can even find fixer-uppers, and if you're able to do some gunsmithing or know somebody who, who can, you could repair, repair an old gun that you got for a good deal and bring some life back to it. Time for me to pack up and head out. So that's it. I know the video's been long, but if you like these antiques, if you like these old West guns as much as I do, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you're interested in attending, all you have to do is go on Google and type in Las Vegas Antique Arms Show, and it'll give you the upcoming dates for future shows. It's held every January in Las Vegas. If you really like these sorts of things, it's better than going to a museum, because at a museum, you can't purchase what's behind the glass. But here you can. You don't have to make a purchase if you don't want to. But if you see something that you just have to have, they've probably got it there. Thanks for watching.